Hello and welcome back to PGT Designs. I'm Patricia and I'm very happy that you decided to stop and work with me today um, with this new um, salon um, 2022. Uh, so much love, snowman project and uh, I'm gonna be flipping the camera so I can show you some of the details and techniques that we are gonna be using in this new salon. So please give me a minute so I can flip the camera and then you can see here we have the blacks that we are going to be working on and then it's going to be a six weeks um, black uh, project each week you will get two blocks and then it will be the first ones are this two and then this is going to be one large and one medium size block that you will get the first week and um, each week you will be getting the same a large and um, and um, a small block a medium block size and then um if you want to get the pdf download are for 95 for each week for the two blocks. If you want each week a uh, pre-printed block, also available again, and um, it's a, uh, the, the two blocks too, and that will be 1995 for both of them. So you can have all the details on the website when you decided to, um, you know which way do you want to work the, all this and then this is my final blocks and then this is regular cotton fabric and i want to show you um the other option that we have here is rustic linen like we did before um white rustic linen in the moda um mucky dot or something like that it's more linen it's a blend um i think it's 50 50 or something like that cotton linen fabric but it's from Mora. it's a very nice um fabric too so if you wanted to you can get the pre-orders in these three the pre-print blocks in these three this one as you see is not finished it's not stitched uh, but it's coloring and these two are so you have an idea of the, how they look and now I'm going to show you about some some of the details about the blocks the blocks are eight and a half by eight and a half the big ones and uh, let's call these ones the, the smaller ones um, these ones are eight and a half by six inches, and we are going to have a corner um, block that is going to be six by six. And this is the layout of the blocks, uh, the quilt. And here you can see that this is going to be like six by six, and this one eight and a half by six. And these ones are the ones that are eight and a half by eight and a half. So now that you see that, you have an idea how you're going to be um, making the quilt if you decided to work with the whole um, blocks. Um, when you order the, the pattern uh, for the first um, wick, you will get this, exactly like this, with the list of materials in the back and then with your template. And then the template will be just like this. The drawings will be like this and like this. So if you working with your own fabric and your own material, you just have to keep in mind when you transfer your design to your fabric, that this is going to be uh, a size 
eight and a half by six. So it will be like this. And with, when you're working with your own fabrics again, and you just um, transfer your design to the fabric, you have to keep in mind too that you, you have to center your, your design in the block. And then that way um, it's nice and even all around. So that's something to keep in mind. And when you're working with pre-printed blocks, then you're gonna have this, exactly like this. And then, um, let me see, I have one here. When you, when you get your pre-print, you will get it exactly like this with the paper in the back. The freezing paper will be in the back. This time, we have to keep the paper in the back before um, anything else. We, we, we just have to keep it in there and then do the coloring because when I explain in the end of the video how we're gonna be coloring this time, we need to have the paper in the back. But let's pretend we painted, it's ready. So I have this one here and we are gonna be using, again, I like to use it because it helps to keep the shape of the block and it, and it helps the freighted or the, the fabric too. And then we use the iron-on woven cotton interfacing. So if you paint all your design and you're ready to stitch, then you remove the back, there will be the, the paper, right? And then you, you have it like this and careful, you get your piece of the woven interfacing, which I have a, a little sample of the paper here so you can see what I like to use. This is um, from Pelon and uh, I, I just like this product a lot. I use it in all my projects. So it's called um, SF 101 and it's an iron it's an iron on woven cotton interfacing and now um, you will see that it's a rough size in a nice fine size so let's call the rough this like where the glue is that's what we're gonna have facing down in the back of our black and then we we're gonna work very careful because remember this is eight and a half by eight and a half and that's the exact size that we need when we are going to put the quilt together so we cannot destroy too much the shape or the size of this block it need to be exact that eight and a half by eight and a half. So when we have it ready, then we just iron the interfacing, the woven interfacing in the back. We iron this very nice. And then we are ready to stitch. Then here I have my, my sample here. So you can see. So when you iron that woven interfacing, then you go in the edge in an eighth of an inch. You can see it right there, an eighth, because we're gonna be sewing a quarter inch. So one eighth all around, that will help our fabric linen or cotton fabric that you will be using to stretch, frayed, or um, um, 
change the, the size of the, the black. So if you saw the quarter inch all around, that will be a, a good thing to do. And that will keep our, the shape of your black. And then when you have that done, you're ready to stitch. And you can see here, I already stitched in that linen and that shape stay exactly like eight and a half by eight and a half. I did the same thing in the Moda linen and I did the same thing, a eighth of an inch all around the edge. As you can see, I save all the little pieces because you can piece it in and you can keep using the little pieces. So here you can see an eighth of an inch all around the stitch. And again, it stayed nice. And then I already have the stitches and I did the exact same thing with this one. Exact same thing. And as you can see, it's piece it, the, the fusible is piece it in the back. You just have to um, do a nice, um, meet the two pieces that you're gonna be um, fusing and then you can use all the little pieces. And then that way it keep the shape of the black because remember we have to be careful with the size of the blocks since we're gonna be using exactly the same size if you order the preprint blocks. If you doing it yourself and transfer and all the designs yourself, you can always cut it bigger and then you can cut it to the right size when you're ready to get the the quilt together. But if you're doing preprint, I just want to make sure that you understand that part. And like here too, you can see it. I already have the woven interfacing in the back. And then I just stitch around. I already colored this one. And this one is ready to do the stitching. And then this is what I wanted to make sure that um, it gets clear to you because I, um, you know, sometimes uh, people think uh, that black is going to be smaller or something and in this case it's not. In this case it stays eight and a half by eight and a half, eight and a half by six, and six by six. So now when I have all the stuff done and I put the quilt together, then I send it to the quilter. But my quilter, I think any quilter, like any embellishments or any anything that's gonna be in the quilt by the time that they are quilting because it's gonna be in their way. So um, you can see the details in um, like in the first block, the, like the buttons. If you want, you can do like a French knot or you can do any other stitch that you wanna do in there. I'm gonna be using the mini buttons that I like all the time. So that's why uh, in my blocks, I don't have any, any buttons yet because um, it's going to be with the mini buttons in the same as, uh, this is my favorite. My favorite is the linen and then um, I'm gonna be using the mini buttons. So I just want to um, make sure that uh, these get clear with this project. And I'm gonna be working now doing the, the technique that I'm using with this. And I'm gonna show you the details um, with this technique. It's very easy, nothing complicated or anything. And then you always want it to keep the, the page that you get in your, in your pattern because, you know, sometimes when you transfer or in the preprint, if you want to see all the details or, and, you know, where the stitch is going to be or um, 
then you 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 want to keep this handy so you i always keep it next to me and uh here i am going to be show you what we're going to be using this time this time we are going to be using these pencils and as many other brands out there and this um this one says ink pens and they are like it says ink so they are ink pencils and there's many um different brands and i i just like this one and it's called their warrant or something like that you have to understand my accent so it's not very good so but here is my set i don't have a big set i just have this 12 set um i wish i have a bigger one so when you do your um your coloring you have more options but so far it worked good for me it worked um you know the the you can see the when you doing the shadows and um I can still use it, but I, um, sometimes I, it's nice to have a little more, uh, you know, different shapes of red or greens or um, any other color. They have two or three different shades. So here, here are the ones that we have. We um, we are gonna be using two, like always, um, the Jigwork um, textile and we are going to be using this time we are going to be using um synthetic brushes and i i have this set and to be honest i just cut it myself to the shapes that i need because i i was not able to find what i want in the store nearby me so i just did myself what i what I was gonna be using. So I cut it in a smaller and medium sizes. I, you know, they come in sets, so you can buy a singles and um, pieces, but I I just went there and bought a set and I was looking for singles with different shape. I was not able to find it, like I said before. So I just decided that the big ones, I just cut it. As you can see here, I cut this one to make it a little smaller and pointed. And um, one thing is that we need a synthetic because we are gonna be working with this. And uh, uh, to be able to do the the shadows and extend the, the color, if you uh, wanna say it that way, we need it to be uh, a little bit hard, but not rough we don't want um, very rough or thick, um, um, I don't know how you call this, like the hair or the bristles, or um, you just want it fine, nice, but you know, firm, like that you can, you can see there. So if you just go in the art store and ask for synthetic, or like, for example, I, I bought myself a Hobby Lobby, so, um, they have in there many different brands and many different sets. It just happened that I have bad luck when I went in look for mine. But uh, I just make it this work and it worked perfect for me. So I just going to be doing this quick. And uh, please, if you have any questions or anything, um, you can call me and. Uh, you know, I, I will be happy to help you. Um, and there's as many ways to do this. It, this is the way they work for me. There's many techniques out there, but, um, and everybody have their own preference. This is what it works for me and um, what I like to work, um, that technique that I like to work with. So here I'm gonna have my drawing and then my colors, and then I'm gonna have my piece. Remember, we have to keep the paper. The paper um, in the back of our, our block. 
and then like I says this is how I like to do it we want to have handy a good sharper for your pencils you want it to be able to have um, nice point for the small pieces like we want to be working in that in the little bird so it's a very tiny so we just wanted to make sure that we can get in the right in the right spots and not get out of the lines so I'm gonna start with this so you can see it's just like any other coloring you don't want to do hard strokes like this you just want to go on the circle of motion and very soft because you're gonna see when you work with these ink pencils when you apply that textile the colors bright up so I just going to look for a little piece of um, cloth around here or this you can always have um, yourself if you're gonna be working a lot with this you can always make yourself a sample so you can you can go like this and you can see the color is right there. You, when you apply the textile, you don't need much, but you need to cover the whole thing with the textile. So you just load your, your brush. And you always want it to have a small container so you put a little bit in here when you're gonna be working. This is just for the sample, so you understand what I tried to tell you. So you can see the color right there. And when we apply that extender, look at how much bright up. I just gonna do this little piece. You can see how much bright up. So you don't wanna be doing a lot you know, of the coloring because otherwise it's gonna to be too bright. If you want it brighted, of course, you want a little more, but um, you have to keep that in, in mind. And uh, one other thing is like, you can make a sample, like with all your colors going down, like each color you do this, and then you can um, write down the number of your pencil right next to it here and then you know this is with the textile and this is without the textile so you when you're working in a project and you know you decided what color do you want to use if you're using you know if you're doing a lot of projects myself I like the surprise I just do it like that and then so but anyways here we go and uh, like I says, I just go light first and then the same in here for the wind. I just go soft and then the same here for the rest of the bird. And like always, this is your preference. If you want it brighter, you apply a little more. And if you want it a little less, then you just apply soft and not too many not too strong and then here we go with the yellow for the big here and I think I need to sharp this is what this come handy because you need a head for a small small pieces like this you can see this right there and then like that and then you can see here it's very flat right like for myself i want the body of the 
bird a little bit darker because we have to keep in mind where the light come from. So the wind is above the body. So it the shadow will be in the body. So that's what we need to keep in mind when we doing something like this. So we just go in the edge of the body and the, where the body and the wind meets. And then you can see to, you know, for the shadows. And then the same in here is a little bit in here in a little bit in here. You just have to keep in mind, you decided, well, the, the, I want the light to be this side. So then you, you keep in mind where the light is hitting your design and decided where, which part do you want darker and which ones do you want lighter. And you're gonna see when we use the ply the textile, I'm gonna close it here, um, how this is gonna change. And uh, if you want here in the wind, you you can always give a little bit of shadows too. This is something that you, you pick yourself when you're doing it. And it's very fun because you can come and go and you know, with this and, and if you, decided to see how that looks right now, you can go and apply right now there. But I wanna keep going because we don't have the, the whole day to show you this. Uh, for example, for the nose, the nose, for, for sure, the peak of the nose is a little bit lighter, then we go and apply a little bit of yellow. Like I said, if you have a different um, um, set with a lot more colors, you want to have two, three different um, oranges and um, uh, two, three different uh, shapes of co each color. But I, I have just this one and I managed to do it very good. So I just apply a little bit of yellow on top. And then I got the wrong one, I got the orange. And I, again, I'm gonna sharp. And then I go in around. And you don't wanna do, like I says, a, a straight lines. You always wanna work like in circle motions. So it give some um, um, dimension to your, to your design. So if you, you come, of course, it's gonna be a little bit darker because it's close to the face. So you go a little bit darker here and then the bottom, and then you go doing the same thing all the way to the front, to the pick of the nose. And then you can see this. Right now, you can see where those two colors meet, but when we apply the the Jaguar textile, you're gonna see how they blend together. So now other small details, so it's, um, you know, those are the ones that are a little bit harder to work with, the smaller ones. So that's what I wanna go through. Like, for example, um, the heart or the pocket. If you decided to go, wh whatever color you decided to go, you can, um, take your your color and then uh, of course my hearts are always hard are always red so I wanted to do it a little darker in the edge and then then I go like all the way around and like always in circular motion And you, um, you go, if you want it just plain red, you just apply red in the whole thing. But I like to give it like, you can see in my, in my heart here, so, um, I can show you. 
is a little bit of, uh, it give a little bit of volume or shape to the heart into the pieces. And the same with this uh, here, you can see it. When you give a little bit of light in there. So I, I like that, but uh, I have friends, they like just flat red heart, deep red. So that's, that's a lot to you, that's personal choice. So this is how we did that. And then now, when we working like this, um, if I work in the bottom, so um, if you, going to work a little bit again in top you get a plain piece of paper and apply it here and work it so you don't move or you know mix the red anywhere so that's a that's a little tip you always kind of cover what you work with so now we are going to work here in the in the bucket in the little packet um i wanted to show you here for example this is a piece that's like hanging in the you know in the front of that so for for sure this area here will be darker this area here will be darker because they have something that on top is given a shadow right so um i'm using the color and then I just go in circular motions again and go a little a little harder in this area and a little bit lighter in the wrist you can see the difference And like I said before, this is just preference, personal preference in how you wanted to color with this. And then in this one in here, I will go a little bit light like here. So a little bit darker here because we have branches in there that can be doing some shadows. So we just go and then a little bit lighter here. And then that way, you're gonna see how we can blend these together when we apply that. I just wanna go over these little pieces. The same as here. I just want to do this and I need to. Here we go. And then we just go circle motions again and again we go a little deeper color in here if you want if you have like I said before a different green you can apply a different green a, a shade darker than this green they will be in a set with more colors but like I said, I don't have it. So, for example, I can give you the sample with this other green. So I just, I would just will go very gentle here. In this area, this is a, go a little bit darker. These areas. And then we go over a little bit with the green. And then uh, this you can keep going. And like I said, this is the way that works for me. There's many other techniques out there that um, people use. There's many videos in there too. They, explain how to use these pencils and um, like I said before 
this is what it works for me and uh, that's what I can that's what I can um, talk about because this is what it, I like to use so now for example if you wanted to do all the small pieces first and then the, the bigger pieces later that's um, your preference too I like that way I like to do all my small pieces and then go in the large and then um, for example in this one I will be using this color and then again I need to sharp I wish I had more time so I can show you all the details but I I can give you at least the, you know, a little bit of a starter in this. And see, uh, now, I just want the edges to be a little bit darker. Or at least this side, I want it a little bit darker. And always circle motions, remember, because you don't want to have too many marks in there. And then uh, that way you can you can see. In a, in a, in the here you can see that, and you can see oh that how it looks. But you want to see when when we use the the extender, the it's gonna be changing. So, this is for something like this, and then the same thing for the for the rest of the this the design. Um, I wanted to um, do a little piece here with the umbrella, and then what I did with the umbrella is I just go kind of hard in the line in each in each one. A little bit is strong. And then just keep going like this. And the same in here. This one we do like a circle, like a half circle. And the same in here to keep the shape. And then like that. And then we go very soft in circle motions. Like I says, you can play around with this. I really like this technique too. I have other projects that I work with this technique and they they are very nice. They the final product is very nice. So I'm gonna be doing these pieces that I color for you and then um, I'm going to be applying a little bit of this. So what I like to use is just the same brush and then a little bit of that so that way we don't waste a little a lot of this so here we go you always wanted to have a piece of cloth a old um, dish towel or wash towel you can see mine is very you know this a old towel so you just um, keep it by you you can also have a little bit of dish, a dish with water in case you, you need to use the same the same um, brush in different colors so I'm going to be using my 
my brush the the one that's small in, in like a pointy and you can see I don't go too much but enough to cover the area so you want to be seeing here how it changed It completely come alive, the color. Now you can see how that looks now with the textile. And let's say you wanted to have a little more dark here. You can just have your brush and load your brush within the pick at the point of your this the only thing is that you need to be careful if you load too much or you you don't want to mess up your your drawing so you can see right there. You can add a lot more color if you want to using the, the point of your. Now we are going to be using for the nose, we are going to be using the same. This I use this a lot in all the small pieces. So I just, I don't wanna use too much, but we are gonna be working in your, on the nose. I just want you to see the nose, how it looks by now. And when we apply the textile, how the colors blend together. I just want you to see the, how they blend together. Now we are gonna be cleaning the brush. And then we are gonna load in the brush again. I Like I said, I use this one. I use this brush for all my small pieces. So here we go. We can work on this, and you're gonna see how much this. The color, how the color change. And how they blend together. And then, Now we will clean the brush again. And we are going to be working. I have a little hair in my. I'm going to work in the glove here. And then. We load a little bit more. And then we work here, this area. Is you can see here when we darker we did a shadow with a darker pencil. It's a lot easier if you have it like that with a darker pencil, but 
um, if you don't want to spend the money in the bigger set, if you're just going to do a little bit of the, you know, project here and there, that will be fine, just like that, using the same color. So now we are going to be um, doing the bucket, the bucket here, and we're going to be doing the exact same thing. And you notice here how the colors blend and how they bright up. Like, uh, like I said in the beginning, this is the technique that I use and this is what I like to do. But there's many other techniques out there that you can look. And maybe those work for you, but this is what it works for me and what I like to use in my projects. There's many brands of uh, pencils too, ink pencils. And you can see here, you can blend this where the color is darker if you want it lighter a little bit you just apply a little more of the yeah, work, um, textile and you blend it in and then you move the color and then there you go then you have the the shadow darker in there like we did in the beginning and a little bit of light in the center and there so now we're going to clean our brush with a little bit of water in the towel and then now we're going to be working in the heart i work the small pieces because those are the ones that are harder to work with and then here, you see how you can move the color. So you have to be careful to stay inside the lines because um, the color move very easy with the textile when you apply the textile. And then there you go. We leave the center without any color. And uh, in the moment that we use the textile, we just move the color towards the center and leave a light red in the center. So now we clean the brush again. And then we are gonna be working on the umbrella quick. And then we do the exact same thing. This is repeat, repeat, repeat. So this is if you need to move your project, you just move it around. I move it a lot. Whatever is easier for you to work with. And then here we go the same way. And then here. See how the color goes, it blends into the whole area here. And again, if you want it a little darker in there and you just want, you just get your, a little bit of the checkboard textile extender and then you go in the point of remember these are ink so you just this cannot be nearby water because otherwise it's going to the color is going to run any everywhere before you put the textile on top of it so you just load your brush a little bit like this and then you go on the lines as you can see here and then you make it darker
if you want you can do the opposite you can just go with the when the time uh, this textile extender is still wet you can go with your pencil and then you go and then then he blends in there you can see it's wet and the extender is wet yet so you can color and it blends in there and then you come back here and then umbrella with some dimension you can work it a little more if you want to and then blend this a little more and then you can work her in you know into the you get the the colors that you want and the in the shape that you wanted to to have it and then but this gives you an idea to how to use these pencils and how to make that the colors blend together and how to use two different tones of greens or just one one color and make it lighter and darker like we did in the umbrella in the heart with the red and the bird and uh, two different colors blend together to give light and shadows in the nose too and then uh, this way you can work your whole project like that and then I just wanted to see again um, this is the one that we just color going to move these things to the side and then this is the one that we work with the mocky mocky dot I think is called from Mora Lennon this is the rustic white linen and this is the rustic linen and then this is just the regular cotton regular cotton fabric and with this I just want you to see um, Nick, just give me a minute so I can show you. Okay, I'm back. Here, we all know about um, uh, Micron uh, pen, and it's many different colors too. So like if you don't want to um, do the stitches and you just want to do the coloring and finish the, the quilt or use the blacks for a different project, um, then uh, it's something that you can have do this too if just in case you don't want to do the the coloring I mean excuse me the stitches you just go because these are permanent so you just go around and that's what it's nice to have the next to you to see it in case that you want you don't see very good where the lines go. This is like if you wanted to do it just with a marker. It's, you can see the shadows and they're very strong, but it's because there's nothing in the back. But um, this is how it will look like if you just go with the micron pen around 
to be honest, I like to use the stitches because the stitches bring a life the design. So that's that's what I like to use. But uh, I just let you know about that because some people like to do that too. But um, again, this is what we um, did today. And I hope this helped you to go through the project. Um, you're going to be using the same technique over and over again in all the blocks that you're going to be getting. And it's very easy and it's very forgiving. And I think it's um, a very nice way to pass winter. We just coloring and you can always give the coloring pages to your grandkids or your kids when you're done with your project. And... Uh, and uh, work with them, have fun with them too. So here again, this is what we have. And this is what we got work today. And all um, the samples that I have for you. And I uh, remember when you get the pattern, this is what you're gonna be getting. And then with all the material list in the back and with the with the drawing the template that you have to transfer if you don't get the uh, preprint this is, and then again this is the layout of the quilt and I just don't want to make this video longer. It's been long. Because I think it's a very long video. But I just want to go over all the details that I think are important for this project. And then I hope you enjoy it. And uh, that you like it as much as I do. I just love to work with this kind of technique and um, come up with new ideas. So have a good time. And thank you for joining me today. Bye-bye. Mm,